Hi, I'm Diana Montford, the world's first transgender television journalist. My guest is Mr. Eric B., who is a New York City street vendor, uh, a veteran of the Army. He's going to tell us, if you want to be a street vendor, he's going to tell us how. It's a fabulous, interesting life, and he's going to tell us all about it. Mr. Eric B. Well, hi there. Hi, how you doing? Just fine. You know, I'm not the Eric B. that rock with, you know, with rock him, but you know, there's a whole lot of people who air their last name is B. Uh, that's why I am. Eric Bolton, born Eric Johnson, born here in New York, raised in Detroit. Okay? Now, uh, when I first came here in 1990, you know, uh, from Michigan, mm -hmm. I was raised in Detroit. Uh, I was uh, first, actually, uh, I never knew that I had uh, another side to my family. So that's the reason why I came over here in the first place, because I found out by accident that uh, I had <coughs> a father, my biological father was uh, from New York. Uh -huh. And, you know, but that's something my people never told me. So uh, I found out by accident, I came over here in 1990. And when I first came over here, uh, I got work immediately, no problem. I uh, got a job working for Pathmark. You know, and then uh, early to mid 90s, I got a job working uh, <coughs> for uh, Sodexo food company, uh -huh. you know, I worked at the Lever Brothers building on uh -huh. 93rd, on, on 53rd Street, uh -huh. Park Avenue, and uh, after that, <clears throat> someone had told me that since I'm a veteran, you know, I can get my vendor's license, uh -huh. so I got my uh, vendor's license in uh, 1998, uh, you have to be a veteran, uh -huh. even though uh, they, they, they do have a lottery, I don't know, every five or six years they have a lottery, but... Uh, for non-veterans? For non-veterans. Uh -huh. uh, you have to be a veteran uh, to get your license. And, uh, you know, <coughs> you have your license, you're working for yourself, you know, like you're the captain of your own ship, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and it's a lot better yeah. to work for yourself than it is to work for someone else, isn't it? Yes, because nobody's going to treat you better than how you're going to treat yourself. You know, there was times, you know, like I said, uh, I've been in the workforce since, uh, you know, 19, actually 1978, when I used to have my paper route, I used to be a, a paper route, I had a paper route for a Detroit Free Press, you know, back in the mm -hmm. day, back in 19, you know, that's where I learned, you know, how to hustle for myself. You know, because growing up back in those days, in the early 70s and the 60s, you know, everybody had jobs, everybody wanted to work. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we always, you know, went to the store, you know, you know, used to on the street before, you know, or whatever, you know, because that, that's the work ethic that we had, you know, we had that work ethic. Yeah, but now even if you have a work ethic, too bad for you, there are no jobs, we're in a worldwide recession. Yes, 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 that's, you know, that, that, that's one of the things about uh, our generation, because as of right now, the jobs are coming back, you know, I was just in Detroit a couple of weeks ago, and I was talking to one of my partners, he works for Chrysler, mm -hmm. and he was like, uh, yes, there are jobs available, but the work isn't work ethic isn't there. But the youth, yeah. as it, well, they've as grown it, up in such a depressed world. Why would they bother? I mean, there are no jobs, and now maybe there might be one job. It's more trouble than it's worth, almost. Yes, mm -hmm. but but actually, there there are jobs. I'm just saying the work ethic that's that's now is the same work ethic that uh, we yeah, had sure. back 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 in the '70s and whatnot. Sure. You know, that's basically because of largely because uh, a lot of a lot of males growing up with a single parent, and often that single parent is the mother. And some mothers can do a good job, you know, like how you heard about Kevin Durant, you know, giving that speech about his mother and whatnot. Well, President Obama, he's yeah, the son of a single Obama, mother, yeah. And then Dwayne Wade, you know. So there are exceptions to the rule. But on the average, you know, uh, a child grows up in a single parenthood with just the mother, you know, she babies him and rewards him for failure, get bad grades on the report card, and rewards him and whatnot. And that child grows up thinking that's the way it's supposed to well, be. Well, also, television tells people, you know, like Homer Simpson and uh, Bart Simpson, it's cool to be a slacker. So young people grow up thinking that, oh, it's not cool to have a work ethic or to go to school. I'm too cool for school. And they don't go 
and they don't learn how to work. And that's, I blame that in part on the media. They tell people, oh, don't bother with school, don't bother with going to work. You know, and yeah. people believe that. Yeah, that, that's what happens. You know, you take the father out the picture, and the mother is always at work. The TV and the radio is left to raise the child. Of course, there yeah, are wonderful it. shows on television like this one, the Diana Monk. Of course, of course, of course. Yes, but, but, Parker uh, Kitty's in front of me. Average, you know, it, 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 it's, it's uh, garbage, you know, the reality shows about oh my all God. The, the, the females, yes, yes, I agree. the beautiful females, they got millions, their husbands is rich, but they are still miserable. Well, that they're miserable tells, human yeah. beings, I mean, yeah. That just know. tells you money don't make you happy. Not at all. Well, if money that's, don't make you yeah, happy. That they're terrible I mean, human they, beings. I mean, they have every reason, though, they hug within the professional game or they got money. You know, money isn't the, the, the issue. You know, the issue is you know, one person feeling bad, you know, having negative feels about somebody else and, you know, yeah, the stir up nothing, misery. Nothing the stir up misery. Yeah. And then young girls watch this and they figure, oh, yeah, that's how I'm supposed to. You know, she looks good. I know Isn't I'm going to look awful? good like her. I want to be like her. I want to feel miserable like that. You know, and Isn't that sad? Yes, that's, that's very sad. If somebody <laughs> out there wants to be her or his own boss, Let's say you're sitting at home and you don't like your job or you have no job and you're a veteran and you want a license, how do you get a license? Well, if you're a veteran, you got an honorable discharge, you go to the Department of Consumer Affairs, you know, it's on, uh, <clears throat> it's on 42 Broadway, mm -hmm. you know, in lower Manhattan, you know, and uh, you take all your paperwork down there and, you know, you put your paperwork in and uh, they'll give you a license, no problem. That's no problem at all. What if you have a dishonorable discharge? Well, if you got a dishonorable discharge, you probably have to need some type of uh, some type of letter of recommendation. But the thing is, even without the license, there's millions and millions of people who ain't got no license. You know, and, and they're using this right up here, which is common sense. You can sell common. things without a license? Yes, I mean, the internet makes it possible where, oh, where, okay. where you can, anybody, can, can make money, you know, and, and, and be their own boss. You know, mm -hmm. if, if, if they put the, the, the brain work into it, you know, it's all about, you know, common sense, you know. It's, it's not all about, you know, uh, you know, education and whatnot, you know. You know, working for other people, you know, it, it's a stepping stone, you know, because, you know, you have to learn, you know, yeah, uh, you have I to agree. learn from, from, from the bottom up, yeah, you know. Yeah, I agree. And, and you, you know. wouldn't have your own work ethic. If you hadn't had to go every day to a place where they told you, do it this way, do it that way, you learn that way. Yeah, 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 of course, okay. of course, yeah. The same work ethic I learned from the people that I watched as I was a child growing mm -hmm. up, not through my parents, mm -hmm. but, you know, through other parents, you know, all my, the families, other families in the neighborhood, you know, I watched them and everybody had the same work ethic. Growing up, I mean, everybody took care of their own. Mm -hmm. You know, wasn't nobody their hands off begging, can I have this, can I have that? Because, mm -hmm. you know, because back in those days, you know, the man had honor. Mm -hmm. You know, you couldn't give him a, another man something right. you know, for, for yes. free and, and he wouldn't. But of course, in that. those days, the safety net was also much stronger. Yes. And now the, the safety the, the, net the is practically non existent. Yes. You know? The neighborhood raised its own back in the days. Yeah, the government is just the the, the the help itself. I mean, you know, that, yeah, that, really. You know, that, that, that's the way it is. You know, there's no money to be made in helping out the people that need to be helped. Isn't that They're, disgraceful? And this yeah. is America where people came to make money to survive and have better lives. What a shame. Yeah, people have better lives, but you know, well, some yeah, people I mean, do. One percent of the population yes, has a yes, better life. Yes, yes, <laughs> But, but the, uh, the thing is, you know, the way America became America, you know, stolen land. Sure, slavery. You know, slavery uh, yeah. And the thing Murder. Is, murder, yeah. And the thing with, with, with the immigrants, especially uh, the Mexican people who were here first, you know, along with the Indian people. Los Angeles yes, is part of Mexico. Los Angeles, yeah. San Antonio, mm -hmm. El Paso, San, San Jose, all those are uh, uh, Mexican names, you know, and they own, you no, know, they, they, they killed the people and they took the land. Yeah, so, yeah, so they, they, they tell them to go back home 
Hey, uh, yo, I'm already am at home. Not what now, you're not. You Get off my <laughs> land. Yeah, I have a bigger I mean, gun. It's my land. Yeah, now. I got, I got, I got the guns. You know, a man-made law. It's on my side. And you know, I'm like made by my men, yeah, not yours. Yeah, man-made yeah. law. You know what I'm saying? And you know, this is this is the reason why that problem will will that it will be an ongoing thing. You know, forever. Because spiritually, you know, nobody, you don't own nothing you can't take with you yeah. when you die. And we're, that, that includes a land or something. Everything is on loan. Our clothes, nothing. Yeah. nothing Even matters. your own body. You don't yep. take this with you when you, no. you don't take this body with you when you dream. When, when you dream, you see your hands do this, and you see your hands do that, and your body do this. You know, it's not your actual body, mm -hmm. you know, but it's, still, it's, it's in another dimension, right. you know. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, have to have to pay attention to that. You know, you always get the sign. Everybody, but wants. they don't want to. They would yeah. rather concentrate on making money, and not think about life or what it all means, because they've been told by television, by the media, money's the only good thing. Everything else doesn't mean anything. Go get the money, because that's all that counts. And young people believe it, and they do whatever it takes to get money. You know, yes. whatever it takes. Yes, money that doesn't even exist. You know, money that's not the biggest Ponzi scheme. Oh, you know, yeah. everybody mad at Bernie Madoff for what he did, but the whole monetary system well, yeah. is, is basically like a Ponzi scheme because, you know, the, the payoff... It's paper the, money, yeah. Yeah, the paper, the paper money. You know, only one-third of the money is this and paper. Now, everything else is, is, in, is in numbers and whatnot. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> do you think that the military is a good thing for young people to do today? The military is very good for young people to do today. Yes, I believe so. And the thing is, as long as you get in there and learn something that you can use on the outside, mm -hmm. you know, like if you want to make it a career, you like the, the the combat role and all that other stuff, you know, then that's that's good. You know, if your if your your mind is right, your mind has to be right. It's not all about physical. Your mental has to be right. Your mental has to be right. If your mental is right, then yes, you can do that. You can do that 20 or 30 years, no problem. But, you know, but not everybody that goes in the service is going to be in there for, for 20 or 30 years. Right. So in that case, you learn going there, you learn something, you get your skill that you can use mm -hmm. on the outside. Mm -hmm. And they have the military, no matter what branch you go, go to. You know, I met people, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, you know, and they got skills, they mm -hmm. learn skills and mm -hmm. things that they've done in the military, even like myself. I trained my I trained in the Michigan Army National Guard, you know, mm -hmm. when I got out the regular army. Okay. Regular Army I trained as a satellite communications technician. Mm -hmm. in Michigan Army National Guard, I was in the MASH and it was like the show MASH. Right. With the, yeah, with the yeah. set up hospital. I learned to be a, a OR tech. Oh, wow. They trained me to be a OR tech. You know, I worked in the military hospital, I worked at Fort Sam Houston and uh, uh, Fort Bend, Georgia, Martin Army Community Hospital, follow me, infantry, okay, and after I finished that training, I was able to get a job in a civilian hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I worked uh, for uh, Sinai Hospital in Detroit, you know, uh, back in 1987, mm -hmm. and, you know, so <clears throat> that was all because of the training that I got in the armed forces, you know. So. How long were you in the military? Uh, actually, I was in the military since before I was born. My father, who raised me, uh, Mr. Grady Boatner, mm -hmm. you know, uh, <clears throat> ever since uh, I was raised in Detroit uh, from 65 on, he was a soldier. He was in the, he served in the artillery, mm -hmm. uh, Fort Raleigh, Kansas. Mm -hmm. So by him raising me, I was in the Army so the, all the sure. way back then. And then uh, going to high school, junior ROTC, you know, at Northwestern High School and uh, graduated at Western, you know, uh, my uh, <coughs> uh, director of Army instructors, you know, we had uh, instructors who was actually in the Army, they were our, mm -hmm. our, our teachers and, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, they taught us a whole lot of things. And then, you know, from 83, I enlisted and 86. <coughs> I got a regular army from 86 to 89 in the uh, uh, Michigan Army National Guard. Mm -hmm. So, I, having grown up in the military tradition, 
and having the gumption and the intelligence to be your own boss. Maybe you're ahead of some people who are looking for people to just, they just want a nice job that they can go to day in, day out, make some money, have a nice place to live and not have to think a lot, you know, because some people, a lot of people, don't want to be in charge of their own lives. That's why you have a huge workforce when you do have a huge workforce. They like just going to a job, you know, and you are smart enough to have your own business. But a lot of people aren't, and those people are being let down, I think, by the military, because when the military cuts them loose, right. they're cut loose. They cut loose. Well, I like to also say, uh, it also starts from when you go to, from when you go to school. Mm -hmm. I mean, like back in the days, people used to uh, be homeschooled, but like now, school is like a model for what could happen when you go and join the workforce. I mean, your students are like your coworkers. Right. Your teacher is your foreman. Yeah. The principal is the CEO. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't get paid money, but if you do good, you get paid. You know, good grades. Mm -hmm. Get good grades, you get to graduate. You get the uh, the good job and whatnot. And that's the way we've been trained. We've been trained. You know, instead of uh, instead of getting your own business, we're trained to go work right. for somebody else instead of creating your own business. So now you, you seem that. pretty smart to me. How how important do you think education is? Don't you think that intelligent people will always figure out? How to have a good life? Okay, one thing you have to realize and understand: there's a big difference between education and common sense. Listen, the wise are never learned, and the learned are never wise. See, education is nothing but the mere ability to remember and repeat yes, and that's apply good learning what, 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 was, what, yeah. what was taught to you. So, if you got a good memory, yes, you could be educated. But you cannot ever replace education for common sense and intelligence. Right, right, right. You, you, you can't, it, it just... Do they give you an intelligence work. test when you enter the military? Oh, you, you get some type of uh, common sense uh, IQ type of test, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you talk to people and, you know, they, they can, you know, tell if, if you're crazy or whatnot, you know. Mm -hmm. No, no, during your physical, you know. Yeah. Um... Medical care for veterans is not very good in a lot of places. Is there anything we can do about that? Okay, like I said, as far as me and my personal life concerned, like I said before, like I said, I got out the Army, 1990, 1997, seven years after I got out of the military, I had an accident, I broke my leg, Ooh. you know, and bro I a roller skate next to I sat on my but leg. Still, I broke. I, I, I broke my leg. But see, the thing is, I didn't know about my military benefits at that time. You know, someone told me, "Yo, you're a veteran. You go to a VA hospital." Sure. I went to the VA hospital. You know, I showed them my. Uh, I went to the eligibility room. Mm -hmm. I showed them my ID and everything, and they ran my name through. They knew I was an eligible veteran, and they took care of my leg. At that time, I didn't have no health insurance, no Medicaid. Right. I had nothing. Now, you have a bong table. In other words, you sell what some people would consider drug paraphernalia. Well, I mean, it's all about what type of label if you want. But if you want to put that type of label on it, you can put it. But all this is hand-blown glass. It's hand-blown artwork. You know, it's pipes. You know, I sell the, the pipes. You know, uh, because there's a lot of people that like to smoke uh, the, the blunts and the cigar mm -hmm. wraps. Mm -hmm. And I'll be telling people, those are going to be responsible for your kids having slow developmental uh, capabilities when you grow up. Because whatever goes in your lungs goes in your blood system. Mm -hmm. Whatever goes in your blood system goes to your brain. So you poison your brain and all the other uh, <coughs> organs inside your body. And whenever a woman, she has that uh, monthly cycle, she passes mm -hmm. contamination through. Sure. Yeah. And then to the point where she can't pass a baby through and she has to get a, a, a C-section. And which doctors love to do because it's also, you know, they make yes. money out of it. They can yes, they yes. make more money if they chop you up than if it just comes out. Yes, know? yes, of course, of course. You know. 
that's a part of my job. Not not just making making money at the table. You sure. Know, I'm like a I'm a player slash coach. You know, I see all the yeah. young young kids out there. You have to you be know. responsible. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I don't have any kids myself, but with mm -hmm. all the kids that come in contact with me, you know, I don't. You know, they come around me because of the people feel my energy. Mm -hmm. You know, positive people feel positive energy. I love your energy. Yeah. 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 We just met. Yeah. And yeah. I think your energy is really good. Yes, 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 yes. And they come around me and sometimes, you know, <clears throat> you got to be a harsh coach, you know. Tough love. Tough love, you yeah. know, you got to be like Parcells. Or, like the or, military. Uh, <laughs> John Gruden, you out of your mind, you out of your skull. <laughs> well, you have to. Yeah, yeah, you know, sometimes, and sometimes, Scare you know, some, some people, you can, yeah. you know, you could be the, you the, can the, reason you with, be the yeah. Tony Dungy type of coach, you know, where, you know, you could be, you know, easy, you know, because it depends on the type of person that, that you're talking to sure. and whatnot. And the thing that I'm trying to tell the, the youth is, is that there was a time when I was your age, I was just like you. And if you keep on that same road with the pills and everything, when you get my age, if you say you like the way that I look right now, you got to start taking care of yourself right now. Yes, Do yes. the New York City police hassle you because they might interpret that you're selling pipes which can be used Actually, to everybody asked me that question. And the thing, that was, that's what makes my table of, uh, a favorite tourist destination spot. Because there's a lot of times, you know, I have my table set up and I have a police car or a police van parked right behind it. And that's the a, that's a number one question. Everybody likes to stop and, and take pictures and they always ask that question. <coughs> And I have to speak from the truth, you know, even though the pain I'm about to give you right now may go against everything that the hood believes in, the ghetto hood mentality hood would think about, you know, hating the police. The thing about it is with me and my personal, not just with the table, even back in the day, but, you know, they've always been uh, <clears throat> uh, respectful to me, you know, you know what I'm saying? They, would they uh, wish me well? They come by and say, "Yo, I hope you make a lot of money and whatnot." Good, you know? good. Well, also you have a beautiful yeah. table, yes. and your stuff is beautiful. I mean, your yes, stuff is yes, so yes, beautiful. yes, yes. And I just tell the people, you know, <clears throat> I tell a lot of people, you know, if the, if the police catch you smoking weed, you know, thing is, <clears throat> don't throw it down. If they see it in your hand, they already know it's in your hand. Don't throw nothing out your pockets. You know, that's a felony. And I tell people, you know, just. You know, just relax and be calm and whatnot. You know, it, it, it's it's not the end of the world. It's, it's all a about, desk appearance. It, it's isn't a, it's it? about how you, yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm talking about a, like I said. I've been in New York since 1990, and I'm talking about these are times I've been caught during the uh, Giuliani administration oh. in New York. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I heard cops. You know, they they tell me say, long you no. Know, we see you respect enough. You see us come by the store now. You know, as long as you see, you know that you respect us. You no, know, we gonna respect you. I'm glad that uh, you have your own business and that you're happy with that and that you're making, I would imagine, a good living, because a lot of people don't have jobs today, and sadly, a lot of people don't have the gumption or the intelligence to start a business, and that's a shame, you know. Yeah, like I said, a lot of people go to college and... Well, they're the you know, ones they, who are out of work. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, because they have the mentality. You're right. You know, listen, the college is an institution. Mm -hmm. Just like being in prison is an institution. Exactly. When you're in the institution, you become institutionalized. And they think you, somebody has to, the to point, give them a job. To the point where yeah. if, if they're not giving me a job where I went to school for, I didn't go to school for that, even though I could get just as much money or if I can get enough money to help take care of myself, mm -hmm. they want me. I ain't going to school for that, so I don't want it. Isn't that now, that's sad? That's become the institutionalized. Yeah. You know, yeah. everything's an institution. I agree 1,000%. Yeah. And often these people with razzle-dazzle education, so like three degrees are starving. Because they think, you know, no one will give me a job. Well, make your own job. Just go right. make your own job. You know, even there is no PhD in being smart about life. Go... Make your own job. Right. Make your own job. You gotta make it happen for yourself. Cause ain't nobody gonna treat yourself like you treat your okay. My guest has been Mr. Eric B, who is
his own boss, he owns a business, he's a street vendor, he is a veteran, and he is a lot of fun and a really nice person. And you may see him around New York. Where can they see you? Uh, in two places, actually. Sometimes I'm in uh, 14th Street, Union Square. Uh-huh. You know, from 4th Avenue. Right. And sometimes I'm right down the street from Penn Station. Okay. You know, 7th Avenue. 30th. Okay. So if you'd like to meet Eric B., look for him in these locations. My name is Diana Montford. This has been the Diana Montford Show. You know how much I love you. Even if no one else loves you, I love you. Take good care of yourself. See you next time. Bye. Peace.